All right, welcome back. Our next literature lesson in uh, College Prep 11 grade American Lit is going to be uh, an excerpt from a slave narrative. Slave narratives were autobiographical pieces that were written by slaves, mostly people who had escaped from slavery or later in life after slavery had ended, uh, they wrote the story of what life was like uh, when they were a slave. Slave narratives are really a, a rare contribution to American lit because it was illegal in the entire South to teach slaves to read and write. Reading and writing is, is power. You can communicate uh, secretly, you can gain knowledge, and so it was seen as a, a possible threat to the system. In this case, we're going to be reading a narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave by Frederick Douglass, his name's in the title. And Frederick Douglass is an especially uh, powerful writer. He was taught to read and write by his mistress, and he chose to self-educate by reading some of the greatest writers of all times and then practicing his style. Our essential question for this uh, two or three day lesson is going to be what were Frederick Douglass's literary contributions to the anti-slavery movement. And so obviously on the surface, it's another slave narrative, but we wanna to look to see what did Frederick Douglass himself add to this genre and, and to this uh, time period. So Frederick Douglass, uh, by the time he wrote this, uh, he had already escaped slavery. And uh, it's, it's an interesting kind of uh, piece because once he had the help of some abolitionists to publish the piece and it became known that he was out in northern society and he was a freed slave he literally had to escape the united states uh, because of slave catchers if you remember back uh, we had talked at the start of the unit about the fugitive slave act which required that anyone in the north who was aware of a, an escaped slave in the north uh, those people were obligated to turn that person in, have them recaptured and sent back into uh, slavery. So Frederick Douglass literally had to flee the United States and spent some years living in England until the abolitionists he was working with were able to buy his freedom and bring him back home. And once they brought him back home, he was not only a writer, but he became an incredibly powerful speaker. Looking at the literary tools uh, that we'll focus on in this unit, uh, we're gonna take a look at stereotype. Now, most, most people think of stereotypes as being something to do with, with race or, or culture, um, and, and indeed they, they generally are, but the simple definition of a stereotype is it is an overgeneralization. In other words, something may be true about an individual, and people tend to then apply that truth to the entire group when it may not be true. And so we're going to look for stereotypes and, and Frederick Douglass's attempt to dispel some of those stereotypes in this piece. The other one is tone. And obviously, slavery is in a very, uh, it's a very emotional issue. So we want to look at, at how Frederick Douglass uses and controls the tone of the piece. Tone's kind of fascinating. It's the emotional attitude uh, toward the reader uh, or towards the subject. And we can hear tone in people's voices. You know, if, if I'm talking to a friend and I said, how was your day? And, and my friend says, oh, it was OK. Um, I can immediately hear in the qualities of the voice, the speed at which my friend is speaking, the pitch and, and perhaps the use of the word OK, which is kind of a, a very generic term. I, I can hear that it really wasn't OK, even though that's what the words say. When people write, we still have tone. You know, tone is something we associate with sound and yet there's no sound to the printed page. We as readers can hear that. And, and it comes from word choice. It comes from the structure of the sentences, the pacing of the piece. Uh, and so we're gonna look at how Frederick Douglass uh, controls tone in this as well. Now, Frederick Douglass was born in 1818. Uh, he was an eloquent speaker, a tireless, tireless campaigner against slavery. Um, and after the Civil War was over, and slavery had been ended by the 13th Amendment, he actually became a, a, a campaigner and a champion for uh, the civil rights for women. And he obviously, the rest of his life, he fought for uh, civil rights for uh, anyone of African descent who was uh, discriminated against in this country. He was born a slave in Maryland. Uh, he was taught to read and write by his uh, mistress, even though it was against Maryland state law at that time. He escaped from uh, slavery in Maryland um, to Massachusetts in 1838. 
and he met up with and became associated with William Lloyd Garrison, who was the publisher of The Liberator, the leading abolitionist newspaper of, of that time. In 1845, he published the first of three autobiographies, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. That's the one we're going to be taking a look at an excerpt from. In this, he told of his childhood and his youth and, and his eventual escape to freedom. After he traveled to Britain and Ireland, he lectured for the abolitionist cause and then returned to America. Friends helped him to buy his freedom and he moved to Rochester, New York, where he began publishing his own abolitionist newspaper, The North Star. Uh, later, it was the name was changed to Frederick Douglass's Weekly. Uh, and then later again, it was changed to Frederick Douglass's Monthly. The interesting thing about the North Star is that was important to slaves in the South who were coming north uh, many times on the Underground Railroad because they would travel at night and the North Star was sort of their GPS of the time. The North Star is Polaris and it's over the North Pole of, of the Earth. And so if you follow that, uh, head in that direction, you're always going north. In 1855, he published an expanded and updated version of his autobiography, changed the name to My Bondage and My Freedom, and then uh, he did a final version of this called The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass, and that was published in 1881. You might recall at the start of this unit, we talked about John Brown's attack on Harper's Ferry to start a slave re rebellion. Uh, Frederick Douglass was not directly involved with this, but he was uh, unfairly, perhaps unjustly implicated in it, and he was forced to flee to Canada and England uh, once again. Uh, during the uh, during the Civil War, uh, he returned to the United States and he helped organize regiments of African American soldiers to help fight for the Northern cause. Uh, he personally called on Abraham Lincoln to secure fair compensation, fair payment for these soldiers. Uh, if you ever get a chance, look for the motion picture Glory, which tells the story of the uh, uh, a Massachusetts regiment. It was one of the first black regiments. And uh, Frederick Douglass plays an, uh, an integral role in getting that started. After the war, he had a number of political offices. He was United States Marshal. He was a recorder of deeds for the District of Columbia. And he even served as, as minister to Haiti. He continued his political activities and his lobbying for legislation to prevent discrimination of all kinds throughout his life. Frederick Douglass was quite a man. Stop the video now and read the excerpt from Frederick Douglass's autobiographical slave narrative. When you're finished, return here to these slides and view the check for understanding questions. You'll be able to go over the questions ahead of time, see the correct answers, and use them on your check quiz. All right, we're back. Let's go over these check for understanding questions. First question is going to be, who was Colonel Lloyd? Look at the choices, choose your answer. Yes, Colonel Lloyd was Frederick Douglass's uh, former owner. And Frederick Douglass believed Fre that Colonel Lloyd was also his father. How about this one? Complete the sentence, slave children, Slave children were raised by women who were too old to work in the fields. Their own mothers were taken from them as soon as they could be taken from them and sent back to work. Frederick Douglass compares slaves seeking to get assigned to the Great House Farm with which of these? Yes, slaves would, this was such a privilege they would actually campaign uh, to be able to get this privilege to go to the Great House Farm. What was Great House Farm? It was all of the following except for you got it. Great House Farm was never a secret meeting place for slaves organizing the Underground Railroad. Frederick Douglass is, uh, is astonished that people from the North believe what? Yes, that slaves sing because they are happy. Frederick Douglass explains that music is a way we deal with our deepest pains. 
and that slaves sing when they're the saddest. All right, let's take a look at some true or false statements. We'll go one by one. Let's take a look at number one. The tone of this piece conveys Douglas's nostalgia for his childhood. True or false? You got it. That's absolutely false. Nostalgia is a, a warm uh, feeling for the past. There's nothing about this that makes Frederick Douglass want to return to the days of his past. How about number two? In this piece, Douglass challenges stereotypes about slave singing. That's right. We just talked about this one. Frederick Douglass was very upset that people in the North thought that, thought that the music of slaves showed that they were happy. It was really more of a way to deal with their pain. What about number three? In this narrative, Douglas sounds aloof and detached from his subject. In other words, it sounds like he doesn't care. True or false? Yeah, absolutely that is false. This is a passionate piece. And Frederick Douglass even says in the piece, there are tears in my eyes as I write. And so he was very passionate and very emotional. Number four is also going to be true. All narratives are organized chronologically. Even if there are flashbacks and flash forwards, the simple fact is time, chronos, time is the, uh, the guiding principle for the organization. And the last one, number five, in this piece, Douglas alternates between describing events and activities and then commenting on those. And that of course is true as well. This isn't just a, a story. It's a story with a purpose of showing people the horrors of slavery. And so after Frederick Douglass tells us some incident from his childhood, he picks that up and he examines it for us and shows us uh, how it hurt. Well, that's the end of this presentation. You can move on with your next activity. And if you have any questions, you know you can always find me on Schoology. Thanks.